There are many fairy tales that begin a long time ago when the trees could talk. Well, according to author Peter Volubin, who wrote the book, The Hidden Life of Trees, trees can still talk and they are still communicating with one another. And in fact, I am in a second growth forest right now on Bainbridge Island in Washington, where I live. And the trees are talking to each other right now. And trees live in communities just like this one and they communicate underneath the soil and in fact they have evolved over the years to learn how to ward off disease how to share nutrients with one another and they live in groups of families so parent trees and children trees all live near each other and communicate with one another and keep one another safe and healthy and strong. And in fact, trees that live by themselves alone often die and have a much more difficult time surviving. And in this forest, they call it a second growth forest because it was once an old growth forest that had been here for thousands of years. And it was logged sometime in the late 1800s by the logging industry that moved in and displaced the indigenous people. And this forest grew up after that. An old growth forest has to have all kinds of different requirements in order to qualify as an old growth forest. And one of the things is it has to be totally undisturbed. The soil has to be undisturbed at a very deep level and the trees themselves have to be largely undisturbed and then the forest canopy has to function in a certain way to be a second growth forest it has to have been an old growth forest and then logged and now it is sort of reclaiming itself so the trees around here are about 150 to 250 years old in this part of the country in the pacific northwest there's three kinds of trees that live in these forests there are hemlock and cedar and Douglas fir. These are largely the trees that make up these forests. The cedar tree in particular is the one that the Suquamish people, the indigenous people of this area believed to be sacred, the sacred cedar. And so when we think about what it is that we can learn from the teachings of the trees, well, one of the things that we can learn is the community, the community of this forest functions in such a way that it can actually reverse the effects of climate change. It can actually suck up ozone and, and carbon dioxide and transform it and make the area around it healthier. So what can we learn from the teachings of the trees? Well, first of all, we can learn the strength of community. We can learn about putting our roots into the ground and growing stronger, sharing with one another. And we can imagine ourselves rooted deep into the ground. The trees around here, this tree right behind me is rooted deeply into the ground and in conversation with all of the trees around it and growing up steady and strong against all of the many winds that blow we can learn from the trees on how to stay solid and calm and peaceful in a time of great change and we can recognize that deep sense of time 250 years some of these trees around here have been here. Imagine that, and those aren't even considered old growth trees. Old growth trees often live for thousands of years. Imagine what it means to live that long and to be in conversation with the planet for that long. So I want you to take a moment and imagine one of your favorite trees, that 
tree that you can remember growing up with. Maybe it was outside your bedroom window or it was a big tree at your grandparents' house or maybe it's a tree that's in your yard right now. Or, or you visited a forest once and really was, were taken by a beautiful tree. I want you to call that tree to mind right now and think about what was it that connected you to that tree. It's size, the energy of it, the age of it, and how solid it is. When you touch a tree, how solid it feels, how rooted into the ground it feels, and how we can connect with that. The trees have so much to teach us. I feel grateful to live in an area of the country that has so many beautiful trees, and I feel like the Lorax, I feel like I speak for the trees and that it is up to me as a person who lives on this land, who benefits from this land, to speak for the trees and to be a steward of the trees. What can we learn from the trees? Their steady, patient growth, their strength, their seemingly immovability and the fact that they live forever and have seen so much and that quietly underneath the soil they communicate with one another and they have little networks of communities. May we all be like the trees, grounded down into this earth, growing up towards the sky, radiating that solid, peaceful strength. And yet, underneath it all, in constant relationship, in constant community with one another. So I encourage you to go out and find a tree today and put your hand on it. Even if it seems silly, even if it's the only tree around you, even if you can't get outside, which some of us can't, and there is a tree that you remember, or there is a tree in your mind, the perfect, most beautiful oak tree, and you can put your hand on it, and you can connect with that energy. May we all be like the trees together, a community of trees, communicating with one another, sharing knowledge with one another, and with an awareness of our connection to the earth, our connection to trees, and to one another. Amen, and blessed be.